So we're motivated now to understand system dynamics and how systems change over time. Now we're going to develop the very basic mathematical furniture, the mathematical framework that we need that we're going to use for the next two quarters to talk about systems and how they change. The most important single concept, and a concept you will hear a lot, is the concept of the state of a system. Now, our first example is going to be a single number. And we're going to define a state as a number that characterizes the system at a time. So what would an example of that be? Well, for example, suppose we're studying the cup of coffee in the room. So perhaps the state, what could the state of the cup of coffee be? Well, it could be where in the room it is. It could be the amount of coffee in the cup. In this particular example, I'm going to choose the temperature, capital T, as the state of the cup of coffee at a time. Now, in choosing that, why do I choose temperature and not the amount of coffee or the other variables that describe the system? simply because I'm interested in this case in the temperature of the cup of coffee. If I was interested in how fast it was evaporating, I would probably be choosing a different state variable. I might choose the volume. Uh, if I was interested in where the cup of coffee was in the room, I might choose the position of the, of the coffee cup in the room. But in this case, it's just going to be a single variable, T, and T is going to be the temperature. And that temperature is going to change over time and give us the development of the system. Now, the first point we have to make about states is that states have units. In this case, temperature, of course, we're going to measure this in degrees Kelvin, which is, you know, absolute zero degrees. If we were measuring the amount of coffee left, the volume of the cup of coffee, it could be its mass in grams. It could be its volume in cubic inches. Uh, there are a lot of different, obviously, different variables require different units, but states always have units. In our second example, we could be looking at an animal population and looking at birth and death of animal populations and looking at the ecological changes that occur. So in that case, we might have x equals number of animals and again, always, always at time t. That goes without saying. And in this case, the unit is number of animals, x animals, x bears or rabbits or whatever it is that we're, that we're looking at. So we have this concept, in this case of just a single variable, as a state. And I used the term variable, and in fact, these are also called state variables. And that's a term I'm going to use a lot and we're going to use a lot. So the state variable for the coffee system in this particular case is temperature because that's what we're interested in and the state of a system definitely depends upon what it is that we're trying to understand. So the state variables in this case are t equals temperature or x equals number of animals. Now I'm going to make very fundamental additional piece of structure. Over here, I'm going to put the state. And the state 
could be the temperature, it could be the number of animals, it could be the voltage of our neuron. Um, and now I'm going to associate that with a geometric construction. And the geometric construction is called state space. And state space is a geometric picture of the set of all possible states. So if we're talking about temperature, and this is going to be in degrees Kelvin, uh, the temperature, and we're going to make the very odd sounding statement that a temperature is a point in temperature space. So this axis here and this label, we are going to call this temperature space. Now that's a kind of an odd statement because what does that have to do with physical space that we walk around in? And the answer is nothing. It's an abstract space in which we put all possible temperatures. So your body temperature right now is at this point. Maybe later you go out and exercise and your temperature becomes greater and goes to another point T1. But the point in state space is the equivalent of saying the system right now is at this value. And so a point in state space represents the state of a system at a time. And incidentally, we also see a theme that we're going to see a lot in the next week, which is that the change of state of a system is a movement from one state point to another state point to another state point. And that's how the system evolves over time. So we have this equivalence here of state and I'm going to say state variables over here and state space, which is the space in which the variables live. Okay, that's great for single variables. Now let's get interesting. We already saw in the shark tuna system that we needed a pair of variables, the number of sharks, S, and the number of tuna, T to describe the state of a system at a time. And so we are led to this concept of a two-tuple, or pair, if you want an ordinary word, a two-tuple of states, S, T, is necessary to describe the state of the shark tuna system at a time. So if I said, how is the shark tuna system doing right now? You would say the shark tuna system is at the point S0, T0, where S0 is the actual number of sharks at this time, and T0 is the actual number of tuna at this time. So we agree that in a two-variable system here, we need two state variables, and we represent them in a very fixed way with a parenthesis around them and a comma between them. And that is the two-tuple ST, representing sharks and tuna. Now, what does that look like as a space? Well, a single variable got a one-dimensional space, and a pair of variables needs two dimensions, S and T to describe the state of the system. And we're going to take this point S0, T0, and we're going to plot it as a point in ST space. 
So here is S0, here is T0, and here is the point S0, T0 in ST space. And we say that this point in ST space represents the state of the shark tuna system at a point. Okay, so now we understand that two variables are represented by a two-tuple, and that that two-tuple is in turn represented as a point in the two-dimensional shark tuna space. And I'm going to use this phrase a lot, shark tuna space. Shark tuna space is not the ocean. This has nothing to do, again, with physical space. This is an abstract space spanned by the two variables S and T, and a point in it represents a certain number of sharks and a certain number of tuna at a time.